What is up guys? Welcome back to my channel. So in the last video, we took a look at the YouTube API and how we can make a request to that and get the view count, the video count, and the subscriber count of your channel. So we made these pages here, and in this video, we are going to take a look at the GitHub API. So we're going to do this the same way. So I'm going to close out the YouTube API, close out the fetcher, and then these three components here, I'm going to close them out as well. First thing we need to do is we can go to our API directory and create a new file and call this github.js. Now this will be very similar to this uh, YouTube file here. So let's first do export default async, pass in our request and our response, just like that. Make sure you spell async, right? There we go. So what we're going to do in here is we are going to call the API and we are going to get the total forks count, the number of followers and the number of projects or also known as the number of repositories that you have. So the URL that we are fetching, const URL, will be https colon slash slash api dot github dot com slash users slash bj carlson 42 so that is my username you can use mine or you or yours and the first thing we want is the followers so we're going to fetch that endpoint so to do that let's say const response Set that equal to await fetch, pass in the URL, and we're going to say const json is equal to response.json. And to grab the num followers, we'll store that in a variable const num followers. Let's take a look at this in. Postman, so we can see what we're working with. So let me make a new one here, paste the get request, and here we go. So this is the response that we get. It's simply a list of everybody who follows you. So I only have one follower, and this is all of their information. So to get the total count, it doesn't give us that. What we could do is we can use something called object.keys and then use dot length. So let me show you how that looks. We'll simply set this to object.keys, pass in the JSON, and we'll say dot length. So the keys, so this is one key here, so it will say a length of one because I only have one. If you have more than one, it will get that length and that will be stored as a number in here. Okay, so that's how you get num followers. Pretty easy. Next, we want to get your projects. So we need another variable. This will be called URL2. And this URL will be https colon slash slash API dot GitHub dot com slash users slash bj carlson 42 slash repos you can get both the projects and the number of forks with this url so let's say const response to set that equal to a wait fetch url to we'll say const json to is equal to await response to dot json and we can get the number of projects the same way so we can say const num projects is equal to object dot keys json2 dot length and if i grab this url here and we paste this into postman there we go so we are getting a list of all our projects. So this right here is one right there. 
and this is another one, and so on. So that will get the number of the project store in there. Now what we want to get is the fork count. So this one's going to be a bit more complicated. How we can do this is we can say var forks count, initialize it to zero. Then we can say json2 dot for each, say f error notation, we'll say forks count plus equals f dot forks count. And this will be underscore. So this is looping through each of the JSON and finding this forks count. Where is it? Right here, forks count. So it has this in each one. So it's looping through each project or each repository and is getting a count of all of the forks. So it starts at zero, goes to the first projects, adds this number to it, goes to the next one, adds that, and so on. So eventually, at the end of that, this variable here will have the total forks count. And you can do that for if you wanted any of these numbers. So forks, open issues, watchers, stargazers count, that will work for any uh, number. And then after this, we just need to return res.status 200.json in all of our three variables. So num followers, num projects, and forks count, just like that. Okay, so now we can go ahead and create our components. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, so before I create these components, I'm going to create a new folder, and we'll call this uh, YouTube, and another folder called GitHub, and I'm going to put all of these YouTube components inside of this YouTube folder, which means I will have to change this here. So we have the number of followers. So we'll say followers.js. We have projects.js and forks.js. Now these components will be the same as this. So let me copy that, paste it in there. Then we have const projects, just like that. And then we can fetch the data. So we'll say const data, uh, data in error is equal to use swr, pass in the API, so slash API slash GitHub, and fetcher, just like that. Now we can say const, uh, this is project, so const num projects is equal to data question mark dot we have that in this variable here dot num projects and then we can simply return a div with our card we'll give it the same uh, styling so let me just copy this paste that here so this will be uh, github projects, num projects, just like that. And then let's copy this and paste it for forks and followers. So we have num forks is equal to data dot num forks. Pass that variable there and then github forks. And the last one, all right, and the last one is the followers, so num followers, data dot num followers, 
paste that here and GitHub followers. And then don't forget to export the file at the bottom as well. Export default projects, export default forks. This should be followers. And this is the projects, export default projects, just like that. So now we have our three components, oops, forks, uh, followers, and projects, just like that. So now we can go back into our index and we can import all of these. So I'm just gonna copy these three And then we can do another row. So I'm going to define a new row with three more columns. This will be for projects. This will be for forks. And this will be for followers, just like that. And once you do that, we should be able to come back to our local host and Okay, so now it says can't resolve live fetcher, and that is because we moved these up one, so we need to add this so it goes back. Oops, sorry. So it goes back to folder structures, not just should be able to go back here, and there we go. So we see the data coming through repos, forks, and the followers. So that's looking pretty good. Now, one thing I notice is spacing's a bit off. So I'm gonna come back here in the index and I'm just going to add a line break after each one of these components. And I think this should make it look a bit better. Okay, there we go. There we go, so that looks a lot better. So the only thing to do now is to go back and show you how to create a GitHub project and pass our authorization header into this request. So for that, simply go to github.com and then you're going to want to go up here and go to settings and then down here to developer settings. Now, if I go here to personal access tokens, I have a couple already. So what you're gonna do is hit generate new token It'll ask you to confirm your password. Note, so I'm just gonna say YouTube dashboard tutorial. And for scopes, all we really want here is we want public repository access. And that's really all we need. Okay, so I'm just gonna click that one. But if you wanted to have any of these other capabilities, you need to select them here and use the header. So I'll generate that token, and here's the token. Let me copy that. And we're gonna do the same thing that we did for the YouTube to uh, token. So come down here, we'll say GitHub key equals, paste that in. And now what we can do is we can say var key is equal to process.env. We named this GitHub underscore key. And to use this in our, in our request, what we can do is pass it in as a header. So I can say const headers are equal to authorization, and this will be a token plus our key, just like that. And we can pass this into our uh, fetch statement by simply saying comma, braces, headers, colon, headers, just like that. Now if we copy this and paste it into our second uh, fetch, just like that, format everything up, this should work. So if I come back here to our dashboard, hit a hard refresh, you see everything's coming through as expected. 
Okay, so that is how you add a header to your GitHub API request. So that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed and learned how to interact with the GitHub API in Next.js or JavaScript. And in the next video, we're going to be taking a look at the Strava API.